All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny, well, actually rainy San Diego, quite for a change. Don't get to say that very often. So, And today I'm delighted to be joined by Baha, who is in Berlin in Germany. How are you doing, Baha? I'm doing well. How about you, John? Yeah, very, very good. And and Ba has been fascinated with the question since childhood. This is how he can make a difference in the lives of people. And you published last year a book called The Playbook for Engaged Employees. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today is this concept of psychological safety and how to engage employees uh, in, a, in, a, in a more kind of proactive and engage in engage fashion obviously so um let's let's read the bottom line it before we start here um but psychological safety i mean that's a that's a term that's uh, been thrown around a lot lately uh, it's 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 in vogue if you like but what is it what is it from your perspective what does it really mean yeah psychological safety is a work environment where employees feel free to express their questions concerns ideas and mistakes it's a work environment where employees feel free to express their questions, concerns, ideas, and mistakes. And it's one of the key aspects of high-performing teams. Mm-hmm. So how do you go about how do you go about creating an environment of, of psychological safety where people can engage, where people can, you know, speak up, but also ensure that you don't go too far where it's like out of balance and maybe it's, you know, mm-hmm. things get bogged down because there's too much. <laughs> it's too much discussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. How, how to find that balance to encourage employees to speak up and also move things quickly. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think how I can explain you in the best way possible. So there are certain misunderstandings about psychological safety. Certain people think that psychological safety is all about saying yes to everything, trying to have consensus all the time it is not or certain people think that psychological safety is is all about saying no discussing arguing and pointing out what is missing and criticizing people it's not either it's about free exchange of ideas let's say you think differently than i do on a specific point i listen to you i try to understand your viewpoint and we try to find a solution forward so When you look at high-performing teams, one of the main characteristics they have is psychological safety and agile teams as well. And in many cases, agile organizations that get stuck in agile transformation, they do not have psychological safety. Actually, having psychological safety makes organizations make faster decisions, understand the needs of customers, add more value uh, to customers and become more innovative. Right. So, um, so part of the so part of the challenge then is obviously, as you said, is uh, high performing teams is exchange of ideas, it's exploring, it's testing hypotheses, etc. But but clearly, there's also the imperative that you have to move at some stage, right? You know, you can't right. get in, just uh, get caught up in a in a endless cycle, uh, endless cycle of this. So, um, when you work with when you work or advise um, organizations or people, how do you how do you assess number one whether the organization has a, is psychologically safe, if you like, and how do you help or how do you advise companies and and to be able to develop that environment? Mm-hmm. The first part about assessing there are two ways to do it. One of them, in many cases, when customers organizations come to me, a big portion of them come with data. They come to me saying. We have been doing employee engagement surveys, and based on these surveys, we have these, this and that area of improvement, such as one of the areas of improvement is employees do not feel safe to speak up in the company, for instance. So the customer comes to me with the data, and we know exactly what the issue is. The second way, there can be surveys done. For example, there is the research of Amy Admison. She's a prof at Harvard Business School, Mm -hmm. one of the leading academics on the topic. She has created this list of seven questions. One of the questions is, my unique values and skills are 
va valued at work. To what extent do you agree with this? Or when I make a mistake, there are negative consequences at work. To what extent do you agree on this? Strongly agree, agree, neutral, mm. disagree, strongly disagree. So doing this survey, to a certain extent, organizations can see their areas of improvement. So th this is the assessment part, part. Either the customer does their own custom employee engagement surveys, get the data, or doing um, the seven question survey. And how to help the customers? Again, it's really important to understand what exactly going on in the organization. In many cases, leaders play a crucial role in creating psychological mm -hmm. safety. So in many cases, we start with the leaders, mid-level, senior leaders, first to have understanding of this concept, what it is, what it is not, and how they can embrace psychological safety top level, mid level. And after that, touching different employee levels as well, employees um, including as well, because employees also have a role in creating this, the way they share feedback, the way they accept feedback, the way they collaborate with one another, the way they talk about their mistakes and how their relationship with one another plays a role in that. So we try to touch up on different levels in the organization through training, customized online courses, coaching, to be able to start this journey of psychological safety. It takes time. And mm -hmm. also it's crucial for the organizations to be self-aware, to accept their areas of improvement and show the commitment to work on this. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, uh, the, what you just touched on there is the, the self-awareness component and the accountability, because obviously, as you said, the company needs to be you know, self-aware and needs to be accountable for what it's doing. Um, but also on the employee side, they also need to be self-aware and and accountable too. So it's so there is there is that balance. And and I, for one, I think self-awareness is one of the greatest things that you can achieve if you can go on a journey of self-awareness uh, and you can really understand yourself and um, that's the gateway to success personal success professional Absolutely. success um but it's but it's not something that is that easy or people even often know how to even undertake true previously i worked at one organization and in that organization company once I dared to ask a question to the CEO and his reply was, that's a stupid question. <laughs> At that moment, I didn't know how to react. I felt you know, powerless. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not the first time that he replied this way. He replies to employees that way. Employees were afraid of asking him questions. It was a workplace. It was a toxic work culture. Mm -hmm. By the way, this company was always number two in the world in its small niche market, and it was never number one. Of course, there are many other factors which affect this. Sure. And one of the reasons is lack of psychological safety in the workplace. And connecting this to the topic of self-awareness, the CEO is not aware of this behavior or the negative impact of this on employees and the organization organizational culture. So self-awareness, as you say, is the key starting point here. For us to improve ourselves, first we need to be aware. To what extent is, is we have psychological safety in our teams? Awareness. Second, even if we are aware, it's not enough. We need to have the interest to improve. So awareness, then interest. Okay, I'm interested in improving the situation so that we can come up with ideas, you know, to reach to customers. So come up with diverse per perspectives to add value to customers, to create a work culture where cross-functionally we can work well and add value again to customers. Awareness, interest. And the third aspect is knowledge. I am aware, we need to improve. I'm interested in this. The third aspect is knowledge. How can I get knowledge, information on this um, to make a difference? Awareness, interest, knowledge, and then after knowledge, application. We need to mm -hmm. put in practice what we learn and create psychological safety. And the last point is sustainability. We are aware, we are interested, we have the knowledge, hopefully with trainings and learning sessions, reading books, etc. We put them in practice. And the last point is how can we sustain this, these behaviors and this, um, this mindset?
as you say, self-awareness is step number one. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's interesting. The sustained part is interesting as well, because let's face it, uh, you know, everybody has been through a ton of different initiatives that have been come with a big fanfare and all of that. And then, you know, a couple of months, it starts to, it starts to fade or wane, if you like. Um, so what is the key to, to sustaining something like this? Because I can imagine when, when the going gets tough, maybe uh, mm -hmm. people will revert to type. Yeah. Especially in times of stress, we go back to our yeah. old habits. I can give you an example from my experience. I used to work at Facebook. I was one of the first employees in Europe, in Dublin, back mm -hmm. in time, around 11 years ago. Facebook at that time was super strong in creating psychological safety. And they use different approaches to sustain this approach. It includes three aspects, leadership, culture, and organizational design. Leadership element, the organization knows that in order to keep innovating, add value to customers, to keep growing, it's crucial for the organization to create a workspace, workplace where employees feel free to express their questions, concerns, ideas. And at the leadership level, the company started providing managers, leaders with training such as coaching, how to give constructive feedback. This contributes to, you know, this helps creating psychological mm -hmm. safety. This is leadership level. And on top of that, the cultural aspect it's about the values of the company. One of the values of Facebook at that time was be open. Be open to share your ideas, be open, you know, to get feedback. And be open is also related to psychological safety. And the company, when they hire, when we hire employees, we, hire, we do the interviews based on the values. To what extent does a candidate show the value of be open? So hiring is based on the values. And after the employee starts working at, at the company, performance evaluation is also based on the values. To what extent does that employee show the value or be open? So this is the cultural element, leadership element, leadership mindset behaviors, and the cultural element is about, it starts from hiring all the way to performance management. And the last step, which also contributes to sustaining this behavior, or psychological safety, behaviors related with psychological safety is strategic design. Strategic design includes processes, tools, and systems. How can we, as leaders, say as leaders or leaders in, in organizations, create systems, processes, and tools that enable employees to share information freely with one another, to speak up, to create ideas? Facebook, at that time in 2011, 11 years ago, at that time, one of the main ways for organizations to share information was email. You basically send emails to yeah. one another. At that time, Facebook was using an internal social network. A senior manager, for instance, um, makes an announcement. The senior manager writes it on the social network and employees all around the world can see the announcement, can engage with it, can like it make comments. It's a very fast way of sharing information, collaborating mm -hmm. with each other. So these tools processes also helps uh, sustain psychological safety where employees feel safe to share their opinions, ideas, and concerns. So leadership level about the leader's mindset behaviors, cultural level about all the way from hiring to performance management and the strategic, strategic design element. By considering these three aspects, we are more likely to create sustainable behaviors related to psychological safety. Yeah, and it's an interesting point too, because uh, you know, people communicate differently or feel comfortable communicating differently, right? Some people may feel very comfortable with, you know, speaking up. Um, mm -hmm. Other people, as you said, maybe feel more comfortable with reading, considering, and then posting, you know, a, a comment to it. So I think, um, so part of the challenge, I think, is is making sure that you have uh, enough ways for people to communicate so that everybody, you know, so the people's kind of pr preferred communication style is uh, is accommodated as, 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 as practically as possible. True. We can have different ways to express our, ourselves. Maybe some people are more extroverted, some are less. You are right in that. 
At the same time, for us as leaders, managers, it's crucial for us to proactively encourage a space, encourage a workplace where employees feel safe to express their ideas, opinions, concerns. One idea that we can use in our meetings, in certain meetings, we can ask to our employees who thinks different on this topic. This way we encourage them to express their ideas. Who thinks different on this topic? Rather than saying, do you have any question or, you know, do you agree with this? Yes or no? We ask who thinks differently on the topic. This way we try to um, encourage employees to speak up. Mm-hmm. And then, then, and then, have you noticed? I mean, this is one of the interesting challenges. Also, is that we have more generations in the workforce than ever before, um, and you know, so you have that intergenerational thing as well. How how does how does psychological safety uh, or does it help bridge those gaps and help you know inter intragenerational communication and intergenerational yeah. communication? Different generations in the workplace, Gen Z, very much involved mm-hmm. in employee activism, baby boomers, mm-hmm. Generation Y, etc. I also read in the news, Generation Z seems to be very active and express their ideas. Um, as leaders, it, it also depends on the power structure as well. Mm-hmm. Regardless of whether we are, I don't know, baby boomer or Gen Z, if we perceive that once we speak up we are going to have negative consequences maybe punished maybe losing a job we as human beings regardless of the generational factor we tend not to speak up in order not to be in, in danger we try to be liked we try to be feel included and once we notice certain dangers then we do not um, speak up. So the key point here, I think regardless of the generational factor, mm-hmm. is the, the concept of fear. In many cases, we are afraid of speaking up. It can be speaking up to indicate uh, an error made, let's say in production. It can be speaking up to offer new ideas. It can be speaking up to challenge ways of working. So when you look at these three different topics of speaking up, and let's say we have a manager, which is very power driven, whether I'm a, a baby boomer or Gen X, a Z, I would think twice uh, before I can challenge my boss's uh, perspective. So regardless of the generational factor, the key aspect here is the, is the fear, fear of mm-hmm. speaking up. And in case we speak up, what could be the negative consequences? And the main point here is for us as leaders, how can we create a workplace where people do not have this fear of speaking up? Mm-hmm. This way, regardless of the generational you know, factor, people can feel safe to speak up. There are a number of things we can do this. We can proactively ask their feedback. And in case they come up with an idea, a new idea, we can um, encourage them, you know, we can appreciate them that they came up with an idea. In case they point out a mistake, let's say in production, instead of blaming them or um, putting negative consequences, you know, we appreciate them. We see that as an opportunity of learning. And once we do that, again, regardless of the generational factor, people feel more safe to speak up. The key point here, I think, more than the generations is the fear fear Mm -hmm. of speaking up and how we as leaders and employees can minimize this fear. And then there's one more uh, complication to throw into the mix today is that organizations are, you know, uh, the hybrid organization or the different constructs of organizations, uh, you know, people who are not in offices together, people who are virtual, people who are long-term contractors, all of that. So you've got a very, you've got quite a mix in a lot of organizations. So being able to ensure that that psychological safety permeates to all parts Mm -hmm. of the organization, even to, as I said, I mean, you can have many companies have long-term contractors. They're not even employees, Mm -hmm. but they're almost like employees because they've been working so long with the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, employees, fixed uh, contract contractors, fixed employees, hybrid working, and how to create psychological safety. 
three important points here to do that. First point, start creating psychological safety before employees or contractors join the team, before they join the team. One of the things that organizations can do is, I know certain organizations do it, create a body system. You apply to the organization, you go through the interviews, and then you get the job. Before you start, certain organizations assign you to a current employee, that's your body. And before you start, you connect with the, your body and you ask questions to your body or your body contacts you to give you, to welcome you to the organization and answer any questions you might have about the organization, the team, the team culture. You start creating psychological safety, the inclusion aspect before they join the organization through body system. This is point one. Point two is, especially in hybrid work and remote working, many organizations, they focus on tasks. We have a meeting online, we start going through the tasks to do, and unfortunately, certain teams do not know one another at a personal level. Mm -hmm. The second point is about getting to know employees, the team members at a personal level. Maybe starting with a short ice breaking activity, doing you know small talk, what they call in Germany small talk, or mm -hmm. you know getting to know each other, doing social activities, whether online or face to face. Once employees get to know one another at a personal level, this has a positive impact on creating trust, and it's also good right. to create psychological safety. First, body system, start including employees before uh, they join the team. Second. Create opportunities where employees can get, uh, get to know one another through icebreaking activities, online team building, face-to-face -face team building, even as our managers, when we meet with our sales teams, you know, starting the conversation, how are you? How do you feel? Mm -hmm. How is it going? You know, getting, getting to know one another at a personal level helps create trust. And the third aspect is strengths. So... We as human beings, we grow the most under positive light. Mm -hmm. And for us as leaders, managers, it's crucial for us to focus on the strengths of our team members. Yeah. Of course, we have weaknesses, areas to improve. We can also work on that. It doesn't mean that we totally ignore it. But for us to improve further, it's crucial for us to mainly focus on the strengths. The key insight here is, as leaders, managers, what are the strengths of our team members? And how can we, as leaders, managers, help employees improve, focus on their strengths, and improve their performance even more? Of course, in case they make something, you know, they have low performance, etc. we need to address them. At the same time, the idea here is to focus on strength. So in mm -hmm. a nutshell, inclusion before joining the team, let's say body system, and getting to know each other personally to increase trust. And the third aspect, focus on strength so that we can improve um, the performance of our team members. This can help create psychological safety as well. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you. We we um, we believe in the same philosophy on that, uh, you know, focusing on people's strengths, because at the end of the day, when, uh, when people are good at something, they tend to enjoy doing it, they tend to do it really well. So, um, and if you focus, if you try to focus their job more on what they're really good at, um, you're going to get a bit higher performance. But unfortunately, we live in a culture where we tend to focus too much on the weaknesses and trying to get, trying to fix things that are never mm -hmm. going to be fixable. Um, so this has been, this has been great, uh, um, Baha, such great information. And all of Baha's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, um, Baha is my last name, actually. My full name is Mehmet Baha, and everyone calls me Baha. I'm founder of Solution Folder, which is a training and consulting company based in Germany, Berlin. At Solution Folder, we imagine a world where organizations have a collaborative work culture. This is our vision. And to achieve that vision, we provide learning solutions on the topics of psychological safety, resilience, and ag agility, agile mindset. Around um, 16 years ago, I got a, Fulbright, a scholarship from Fulbright, and I did my master's in the U.S. on the topic of conflict resolution. Then I started working around the world. I was one of the first employees of Facebook in Europe. It was a great experience meeting with Mark Zuckerberg 
and um, especially at that time, Facebook had a very high level of psychological safety. Then I moved to Germany. I started working at a German tech company. I was working directly with the CEO and I was in charge of expanding sales in Latin America, Spain, and India. By the mm -hmm. way, this German company does not exist anymore. It was acquired by Apple. Okay. And um, for the last uh, six years, I have my own company. And last year, my book was published. It's called The Playbook for Engaged Employees. I am married and I have a six-year-old uh, daughter. In my free time, I love to travel with my family, play puzzles with my daughter, and play the percussion. I'm a musician as well. Oh, very good. Very good. Yeah, the book is uh, the playbook for engaged employees, and that will be uh, below this as well. So I encourage you to go check it out. So listen, thanks again, Baha or Mehmed. I'd, I'd like to want to call you by your first name before the end of this. Um, thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Yeah.